Now, we have been looking forward to this one for a long time. Inskip Point, the gateway to Fraser Island, our own backyard, two hours north of work, straight on the beach here. We got some new gear, we got the Carbon Fiber 21 Foot 6 Summit Series, that thing's been down in the Best Aussie Caravan Show. And then we got some new product. We've got Expedition Series, which is one of Dave's little babies, 10 foot long, ton of payload, epic bit of gear. First time they've been out behind the V6 Amarox, Crick's Volkswagen here helping us, ARB Maruchador. And then we got your truck with a bit of new gear too. Yeah, we're just testing a new canopy on the back of my 79, uh, just looking for something that's a bit lighter and in this sand, obviously weight counts. Well, let's get on some hard sand and try and get to the top of the island. Eh? You're up the tip, eh? Let's do it. Most of us that are on the trip have been to Fraser before and done the tourist stuff, and the, the goal wasn't really to come and do the touristy you know, destinations and do all the photos and stuff like that. It was coming to test the product and make sure it does uh, what it was designed to do, especially the Expedition Series, but also the Summit Series 21 foot 6. And the whole idea was to get big gear over there, get the new product over there and really test it. And that wasn't going to Eli Creek and having our photo taken, that was going and doing some really rough off-roading. What do you reckon boys, successful morning on the island, low tide, luckily on the island, looks like uh, that barge is a bit of a schmozzle, obviously quite a busy time of year still. Yeah, it was a bit tricky getting on there, didn't think it'd be so difficult um, being a weekday, but obviously it's Fraser Island, everyone wants to get here, so, but we're here, it's good. What are we thinking, you guys that come to Fraser a lot, where we're probably going to find the trickiest bit, it's probably that Nagala Bypass? Yeah, for today, yeah, definitely. Oh, we have to work on our sand recovery, I guess, it's, uh, well, it's good to have David's truck here and finally with the, the right codes in it, so it can go forwards. You just remember, Matthew, just give me a shout whenever you need a little tow, buddy. I'm, I'm waiting here for you. It's good to see those how those expedition series are towing, though, sitting nicely in the wheel track of the Amarok, so they must be towing all right, Dean, feeling all right with that thing behind your car? Yeah, towing real well, thanks, Matt. All good. It's like it was made for it. The key thing is just knowing your tides. So, and that was always going to be the case. You don't have, you know, the, the 13, 14 hour days that we're putting in doing the outback touring. You just don't have that time to cover that ground. It was very much going to be our average speed, obviously coinciding with the, with the tide. Probably a little bit late in the day, so we're a bit uh, pressured by the tide. So we're not going to stick around here too much. This is the first cutting to get over. Dave's just done a bit of a wreck in. It looks uh, pretty okay just here. So we're going to send the Yamarok through and then um, Dave will probably just lead the 200 through and yeah, we need to snatch it. Pretty, pretty soft out the other side, so I'll try and get through there and get up the last bit of the beach before uh, this tide comes right up. Yeah, the first challenge that we had really was um, once we got into Indian Head behind Champagne Pools, um, it's a bit of a steep climb. You do have, you know, the rangers have done a great job. They've, you've got some of the, um, the timber decking they've laid out in the track, but then it gets narrow and soft. And for the big summit, um, you know, Matty did an excellent job driving that through there. Yeah, it's a long track, there's no doubt. And it's quite tight and it's really overgrown. So uh, it's a very interesting track. That, yeah, it's beautiful drive through there. It's bumpy and soft. I'd suggest uh, Dave goes in front of Matt. We got traffic behind us. Okay, well, let's just go. And um, worst case scenario is I um, might have to get you to stop. I might have to winch off the back of your trailer. It's bumpy, Matt, but uh, yeah, just see how you go, mate. Need a, Woo! need a whip out of that. Woo! I was struggling a little bit at the start there. I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I was like, oh, I gotta get the shovel out. There we go. It's a bit of a tight right hander coming up, John's here, so I don't know how you're going to go there. Just came around the corner, it was quite sharp, I had to try and push the car up over a little bump and the boys in front stopped pretty much, so I had to, had to stop the cruise and it basically just bogged the, the van. But then, yeah, Jay's dad was like, oh, I'm going to just take the stump out. So. <laughs> To reef the stump out and then we were good. So it's actually quite impressive to see how everything sort of works in the sand. You know, there's a big heavy trailer behind you, but um, you know, with this thing set right and the tire pressure down and stuff like that, it still gets it out of some pretty sticky spots. So yeah, pretty good. No shovel yet. No shovel yeah, yeah. A couple of burnt feet though, the black sand's really hot. We're about to get on the beach up at Orchid um, Beach and um, keep heading north, so tide's getting in. See how far we get. Um, we're just at South Nangala Rocks. 
Uh, Dave's just shot off uh, in the farm truck to do a bit of a recce. Uh, I think we've got, it's about one and a half hours, I think, to high tide. But yeah, I think we've run out of tide for today, so I think we'll call it, call it a day and set up camp and put on a nice roast. Well, yeah, so we've just, just stopped uh, a couple of hundred metres short in Nagala Rocks and uh, all the vans are pulled up and me and uh, Matt and Marty have gone for a quick recce through there and it's, it's definitely tight. It's probably pretty questionable whether we get the 21 foot 6 carbon van up there, but yeah, we'll go look for a nice camp somewhere in the dunes here, which is the last yeah, camp spot. Fishing. Get fishing right out. Uh, a good cook up, I think. We've moved up the beach on super high tide, so a um, bit of overheating in the, uh, in the gearbox on the cruiser, but little entrance coming in here was a bit of fun. Park them up, got everyone packed around. Get the fire going for dinner, it's a, it's, I think it's a win all around, really. Where we set up was uh, we, we'd sort of the big van pulled in, Nick pulled in with the pod, I pulled in with mine, and the expeditions were up and out and ready to go. Five minutes we were set up, um, music was on, a couple of beers, it was really nice, relaxing. Yeah, Jay uh, cooked up a feast, it was brilliant. So I had some, some lovely roasts there and yeah, got together and had a bit of a banter and plan the next day. It was, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, sit back and have a bit of a laugh and a few beers. So we're just at our camp just south of Nagala Rocks. Um, it's about 5k back up the beach, so we're just having a bit of brekkie now and talking about getting on the beach and getting back up there. Keep coming back to Fraser every year, but I never really quite could get up to the top with the family, so looking forward to it. With beach driving, you could go, like it's literally day by day, it changes with the winds and you know, you can get track reports from people all the time. But um, actually knowing the exact conditions as we found in, in the Gala Rocks, for example, um, you know, you never know until you get there. Well guys, we've got an audience here as usual at Nangala Rock. Um, generally what you get is a whole stack of spectators taking the piss or laughing at people. And their misfortunes, some of them are fools that go through, others are just unlucky, not enough momentum, whatever it is. But um, people not helping their fellow four-wheel drivers, instead just laughing at them and taking the piss. Oh, let's just keep it real cool. It's going to be tight through the first bit and then sandy through the back bit. So we'll just do recovery vehicle, uh, expedition series, recovery vehicle, expedition series in that order. Let's send Dave through first. Yeah, this is the key for Nagala bypass. You can see the erosion just basically left all the rock exposed down, so there's no low road. So everyone's here trying to get through the bypass. Some guy uh, sounds like he's not that well prepared. He's gone through with high tide pressures. He's stuck up the top, and there's this massive queue, and we're sort of uh, we're about five cars deep, and then there's five or ten behind us. So there's a little bit of pressure. I think the boys uh, that are towing are feeling that too. So I'm pretty happy not to have the big rig gear because I think uh, you know if we got that around the corner and then got it stuck, we're potentially just blocking the whole route. You know, for could be half a day. I think from looking at how soft it is. So yeah, we're going to get around the corner. I'm just dropping a little bit more pressure out of the tyres just to make sure if we need to recover these guys that we got the uh, got the grip. At the moment, it's hurry up and wait. So. There's not much we can do, might have another coffee, I guess. Uh, she's pretty chopped up. We've just been told there's been a defender come through and really this first section is what, first 20 metres of Nangala Rocks and um, got stuck and really chopped this up. It's almost like quicksand. So what we're trying to do is just fill in some of these tracks, just worried about it getting bellied out, especially with us towing. So um, I think uh, we've got to get Dave over out in front and uh, have the snatch strap ready and the bridle and the arm rock and fingers crossed. It's probably, in one of the worst conditions I've ever seen it. By the time we got through there, I think it was about 31 degrees, so the sand was really, really soft. We sort of bogged down halfway up. Uh, just in this soft sand that we were talking about that's uh, going up into the middle of the garden. We got through the um, coffee rock. That's probably the easy bit. And uh, let's try and get Tricky Nicky through. And the reason why we were scrambling because we didn't want to be a nuisance to, to everyone else. So yeah, Dave came back down and I think it was maybe five snatches up. beating a bit but um, Nick had a crack first and um, we had some big 
uh, dips at the end of the rock section, which meant uh, it just made that little bit harder once we hit the soft stuff to get, keep that momentum. So yeah, we got Joel out on the shovel to fill things in and just make it a little bit easier for my, my journey through there. But it shows that just with a little bit of extra weight, how much it can affect what the car's balance is like. So yeah, once we lost the momentum, down we went, but thankfully, yeah, had the other vehicle there to pull us out. How hard do you want me to hit you? Can't snatch. Yeah, it was um, it was good fun. A lot of a lot of um, people looking around, seeing how everything went with the pods going through. It was a little bit unusual because everyone else had single cars. Um, but yeah, proved our point. So, Maddie, what did you think of that? That was pretty insane. Imagine taking the uh, summit through there. Oh uh, yeah, sure. definitely thinking that the whole time we're digging holes and laying max tracks and just repetitive snatching on the on the deluxe pod, which is you know just that, that little bit heavier, making it harder to tow. Three ton uh, summit series probably wouldn't have helped that much. We're off to the cave. It's going to be an early one again, but that's what we uh, that's what we're doing the trip for. Try and get these uh, expedition series things up there, and I guess that's the beauty, you know, the freedom that a trailer like gives you. Um, you can get through all that sort of gnarly stuff with a, with a bit of help and um, you know, you still got the comfort and the luxury and all the, all the amenities you want, you know. So thank you for um, letting me sleep in one of these. I know the past two trips I've had my trusty uh, ARB swag, but I'll tell you what, these things are the next level in luxury. And the fact that they can hold two cartons in the fridge, that's even better. Three. You could potentially fill up the water tanks with beer as well if you wanted. Then yeah, headed up to Sandy Cape and just everyone was in awe of it. Like I think it was just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm um, stunning, the, the water, the, you know, the colour of it. I've never been there before, haven't been that far north, but just extraordinary to pull up there and see just um, uh, the clarity in the water and the sand dunes in the background. And it was, yeah, it was just lovely. I think I'll be going back. Well done. There we go, eh? <laughs> we made it. To the top, yeah. I know. Almost feels a bit easier, yeah. A little bit of fun down in Nagala and that's... Oh, it's a nice beach ride, isn't it? Yeah. Those tides are pretty cruisy. I suppose it's only only thing we've had here is the tide. If it wasn't for the tide, we'd probably almost do it in a day the way we drive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just rip it up. But no, it's been good to see everything get out and you know, obviously road testing the new rigs and stuff. So little cruise around the corner here. I haven't been up here before for the first time. So. There's some old army relics out through there, and where they had gun turrets and some tunnels. We'll check that out. Be pretty cool. Just have a bit of a look around, really. Yeah. A little tourist afternoon. We made it up here too easily. Yeah. Jay brought his tinny along for the whole trip for that uh, that little time period where you could put the boat in and go fishing and try and get some marlin. So he took off, um, and then we realised pretty quickly that we were going to get bored where we were. I've had this nice little visit to the uh, to the point of Fraser, and um, it's pretty early in the day, and everyone's a little bit sort of antsy. So we've decided we're going to go and try and get to the west coast. So. We gotta go all the way back, we gotta do Nagala Rocks, pick up the big van, and then we gotta go inland. And uh, we're unsure of the track, we don't really know how it's gonna go, so probably a little bit more how we're used to doing these trips. A little bit of winging it and hoping for the best, and now we're under time pressure, so we gotta go. So yeah, we were fighting the tides and things were starting to get a little um, interesting, I suppose, as, as the day got on, but you know, that, that's, that's the beauty of having weekends like this or a four day expedition like this. You can live a little bit on the edge like that and obviously we were, we were all self-sufficient um, self so it wouldn't have mattered where we ended up to be honest. Well we had the Browns rocks there which probably almost was the biggest challenge of that whole day. Oh mate we come across some rocks and a bit of tide that beat us. So. Got to try and get the guys up these little sand dunes. They're pretty soft. So, nah, it's all good. Precarious? Yeah. Is that the word? Tell me when you're ready, bro. Righty go. I am all systems go, mate. Okay, here we go. I'll pull you up here too, mate. 
Let's go. Thanks, brother. There was this little bit where you go to the exit and that was just, that turned into a schmozzle. That was, that was Max Track City. There were just recovery treads after recovery tread. So close. Really just trying to find traction in stupidly soft sand. So I'm um, hence why you saw the wheel just going left to right. Hopefully you're trying to find some hard stuff down there. Unfortunately, yeah, with two ton on the back and a heavy truck. Yeah, we're just right at the peak. So um, hopefully the boards will get us out, it'll be sweet. Sick boys. Everyone's pumped, let's do the next bit. All right, let's go. Almost got there. I thought you had this, it's nice and flat. Sun's been on the sand all day and she's slippery real hot and like look at it, it's just like powder. So the hard stuff was up the top. We made it through the cutting real easy. We managed to put the tow vehicle on the front of my vehicle just so that we didn't hold up any more traffic. So it was a pretty casual trip through. But once we hit the rock section, of course, everything narrowed up. So we just took it nice and easy through there. But again, with off-road suspension and everything set up the way it needs to, it yeah, makes a hard job pretty easy. Now, we eventually got through and that killed a bit too much time. So it wasn't going to work to take all the trailers across the west coast. We'd started to get a feeling that the day was getting away on us, so we decided that we'd just go for a drive, pick up Jay um, and Mark, and then, and then cruise back and camp. Well, we popped over to Wathumba because um, my mate Jay and his old man went out in the, the boat this time of year, so marlin season out the front here and uh, apparently there's generally a few of them but uh not no luck today maybe it's probably because i'm here now we got to get back it's probably probably an hour at best with this thing on the back um but anyway get back there and have a bit of a cook up so back at camp same camp as last night which has been handy for me because i just left the summit series here didn't have to move it they brought the boat back over for jay so we're all back together which is great news for the morning we're gonna hit it we're gonna head south it's been an amazing day uh, we've got to get the barbecue going now, a couple of hamburgers for dinner and then off to bed early so we can, uh, we can pack some more in tomorrow. So we're starting up while well, we are now zone eight, which is pretty much you know on the on the cape. Cruise down to the Indian Head Bypass again, which is actually a really nice track. A bit tight for the big girl, but probably hit Cathedral Beach to fuel up, and then we're going inland. So we're gonna try and get all the way to the west coast, some nice camping spots over there, just something a bit different. It's probably the path least taken on Fraser, but we're gonna give it a crack. All right, we're going. Definitely noticed the big man on the back after having nothing yesterday. First little minor challenge for the day, eh, team? Let's hope it's one of many. That looked uncomfortable. Yeah, it's gonna be uncomfortable for you. There's definitely pretty bouncy. He's up. He's coming back down. Have one more go if you don't get it, I'll uh, come, come back around. Oh, here. he's a good one. He's up. Nice work. Hey Dave, back here, right? You stuck? You smaller campers go past me and then I'll reverse back down to Matt. Uh, I'll just keep you in tow until we get to that timber. Yep. Alright Dave. Go faster, faster.
co-pilot doing his job. Cathedral, so there's three spots I think on the island where you can get diesel and this is one of them. Um, I've got the light on and everyone's probably about half a tank so just uh, going to be precautionary, chuck some fuel in, uh, maybe get a coffee and then head down the beach a bit further and then across the west coast, so challenge these things a little bit more. Again, yeah, my mate Jay had been over here a month or so ago and was telling us um, about this, this beach and a bay further down to the south from Wathumba, so uh, he was uh, pretty confident that the truck was well and truly uh, wide enough to, to take the big van. Yeah, I was always sceptical about heading across uh, any of the tracks heading, heading west. Um, they're obviously extremely narrow, anything you read about it through the HEMA maps. Um, it just says, you know, try and avoid towing. When we talk about these trips and people tell us things like, you know, you, you'll never get a, a big van across the west coast, we go, well, we're going to get a big van across the west coast. It's sort of, you know, it's baiting us a little bit, so. she's pretty soft and only gets tight at the top. Uh, very, very tight. What is very, very tight mean? Uh, the camper scraped on some branches. Try and stop and have a look, mate. Just wait. Yeah, just watch there's a bit of little tree on the left we just pulled down the sharp ones. Good to go right. I'm just going now. Can you give me some intel on it? Oh, no, it's not overly soft, just a bit of speed. You'll see some tidy stuff, but we've just cleared the main tree that would, probably would have been a bit of a problem. Jeez, it's getting tight now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's a low hanger. <laughs> to the central area of, of Fraser Island, you get that rainforest and it just, it was gun barrel all over again. <laughs> this is a bad one. What's that? This is a bad track. Mm. That's not all good. <laughs> There's not too much I can do, eh? Hey, Coffee. Yeah, I got you, Matt. Hey, Oh, she's slow, man. We're going real slow. Well, when you get up, there's a spot to turn around. Is that the way we got to go to the west coast anyway? Uh, no, it's not, mate. Um, we're just going to stop because we're speaking to some people. They're saying that there's some big erosion gullies further on down. Just saying, if you go on the west coast, you won't, you won't be able to get a back up. Oh, up onto the, out of the beach? No, um, there's one section to come back this way. And this is the only way to come back. Yeah. You won't get on. Right. Do you guys get stuck with your things or you're no, right? No, no drama. But a couple of people just told normal campers, like, you know, 1.5 ton, um, and they were had to whips all the way up. Yeah, right. Or get snatched all the way up. Like, you'd probably do it, but that looks big and heavy. Yeah, it's big <laughs> and heavy. <laughs> Should be right. Everyone we passed was telling us that we were ridiculous for trying it and, um, you know, I guess that was sort of baiting us further and we stopped. I guess it was about a third of the way out. Yeah, just a little bit tight, but um, managed to get through so far. Still trying to have a discussion if we're gonna keep going, but um, yeah, just some big big trees that probably aren't moving too far. And the only way we're getting through at the moment is just <coughs> rotating on the airbags. Gives us 500 mil clearance one side to the other. So have a bit more of a power wow and see whether we're going to keep going. Oh, so they're saying you can't go that way, but this way. I know, so they're saying this day came on this track where the 3.5 k's is. Yeah. But see, because you've got the topo lines, it's all cut through the hill. Mm -hmm. um, and they're saying it's quite tight because there's uh, erosion gullies from all the rain that we had a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And it's more the width and the sway because it's got, you know, walls obviously. We can wait and see what they say. See what the boys say. What's the hard, what's the hard bit from here? When you're saying that's Maybe one or one particular log that we saw that could be a potential drama, and then this uphilly bit, which I wouldn't even 
So we're going to tow up that, that's fine. But it's I'm worried about road width, that's the only thing that's just no, it's a piece issue. of width, man. Like what, everything we've just done, it's better that way. Right. We sent Dave out to, to check it um, without a trailer. He came back in very positive spirits, saying that the track was going to be easy from there. And, you know, that's I guess that's Dave's optimism, which is a wonderful thing, um, but not always uh, that reliable when it comes to track conditions. So. Just roll it now that way. Which so one? Right hand side up. Go the other side down, left hand side down, just do it, you can do it at the same time. Pretty big roll on that. All good. Easy. Strain it back out. Yep. Yeah, look, I, I, I can tell you right now that a van that big that wasn't on independent airbag suspension that we were allowed to completely rock the van from side to side, there's no way you would have got through. There's a lot of hard timbers and stuff that are continually hanging out and tight shrubbery and it's got some rub marks on it, but nothing that the detailer won't polish out. I think it was always a plan to be able to do something a little bit more than just yeah, I'd do the normal stuff where people would go really show what these vehicles are capable of, what the vans are capable of. And um, yeah, it was, it had a couple of little interesting spots, but it was again, it was a journey. You know, the, the stories are about the things that happened along the way and you know, the fun times we had. I think it was 32 kilometres, took us four and a half hours. So um, it was pretty insane. So, and that was put, like, I think all of us felt like we we're, were pushing pretty hard there just to try and get through. Mate, how good's that been? That's like, they gave me so many memories of the old gun barrel, a little bit softer, <laughs> uh, just as tight in sections. Bring, brings back a few memories, mate, but yeah, a little bit, little soft. They said it couldn't be done, but we can see the western side. Yeah, that's epic. We're, there's so many people on this track on the way out here were like, you guys are dreaming, there's no way you'll get there. And, this thing's in behind me is in perfect shape. Looks like scratches, you wipe it and she comes up. Perfect. Yeah, it wasn't just uh, people around Australia, mate. There was a few guys going past us today looking at you thinking they're not gonna make it. Oh yeah, that's pretty epic. Look at that. We've got about half an hour of beach left and it looks lovely. Just came out onto that, that white sand. It was pretty cool, wasn't it? Like, we made it. Yeah, we, we made it, West Coast. Oh, it's been a big day. It's, um, you know, you always get told the track's okay, it's pretty easy, a little bit of four-wheel driving, but not until you get in there with the big gear do you know. And she's been tight, it's been turning, it's been soft. You know, there's been a lot of trees and, uh, you know, obviously a little bit nervous with the, the van. It's not here to scrape trees down the side of it, but I guess that's sort of what we're learning, you know, and that's the beauty of this thing. The carbon fibre body is just perfect. The Expedition Series, almost too easy to get here, so. Yeah, everyone's had a good day, it's been fun. We're gonna pump the kite up and get wet, so that's why we came over here. I didn't tell everyone that, but that's the main reason, just to come to the West Coast so we can go kiting. felt almost like being um, in WA and, and just seeing the sunset there, it was just absolute magic and I think we all got some great pics, just us, we're all lined up, just you know, watching Mother Nature do her best. You know, if you had that gear and you're heading over there for a week or two weeks to, to that side of the island, I, you know, it'd be the best two weeks of your life. We, we condensed the, the itinerary a bit and day four was always leaving day. Um, you know, we probably had a bit on really because we, we didn't leave camp until about 10 o'clock in the morning. We had to do a few things before we left. So the plan today is to start heading home. So we're going to get off the beach and then we're going to get back to the east coast. And some of the stuff we were coming down yesterday, I think it's going to pose a problem. Everyone's optimistic. We'll see how we go. I think it's going to be a long slog to get back there. We were sort of, you know, we were hopeful that the track was going to go well and we could get up the, the steepest bit. That was that was basically the section that we all warned about the most, people telling us that we were crazy. And when we got there, you know, really dawned on us how soft it was. Okay, I think for the trailers, we might just lay tracks in all the holes as well. well let's just have a quick look at this and see how it looks. <laughs> Cowboy. Assured, no one wants to try it without a tow, and then if you get stuck, we'll do it. Yeah, we're just gonna lay some treads in the holes. All right, I'm rolling. Okay, we're watching. This is 
absolute worst you can have with everything. It was soft sand, super steep, and had these real big wombat holes. So basically they're just in different areas. So your front right wheel will be in a hole and your rear left wheel will be in a hole and the car's just it's sort of, it's like a pendulum. It just, yeah, you never really get that traction. Made it halfway up the hill, but got a bit stuck. So I'm gonna give it a try to get going on the hill, which probably isn't going to be that easy trying to snatch him out. But um, if this doesn't work, we'll just have to winch. So hopefully this works. Dave started training him training everyone up and you know we got the expedition series up with the Amrocks and then um, you know I got really stuck with this thing and you know it was, it's just it's a heavy big van to get up something like that and you know it, the earth was pretty chewed up I guess by the time we got there so um, yeah she was a battle. Keep coming back Biggie, just gonna have to hit it hard man. We put a toe strap on him and get him up on some harder stuff. Yeah, I went to war with it and got all the straps out and uh, you know all the recovery components and uh, you know we threw everything we had at it. Yeah, nearly the top of the challenge. Got Dave on the hard sand and that sort of gave it enough grip and yeah, it's just one more pull and she's out. Everyone warned us that that particular spot would be, you know, they thought we wouldn't be able to get through it, but we all got in and got the job done and um, got all the vehicles up. I was pretty impressed with how we, we all got together and we joined a couple of snatch straps and the guys, yeah, the guys, have, the guys have come a long way since the first trip, that's for sure. <laughs> it was nice to uh, get the vans through and just see again what they're capable of with the right accompaniment and it um, uh, doesn't matter what the world threw at us, I think we were ready for it. So this is probably the only day we underestimated how long the day would take, you know, our travel. We all, we all had a deadline today to try and get back and just coming back the opposite direction of the track. We, we did a lot of clearing on the passenger side heading up. I think uh, all three of us towing found that, oh geez, is this tighter than what it was the previous day? So Yeah, it was a nice drive really from there. It's tight, it's still very tight and you have to be very careful. You know, pumping the, pumping the bags up to roll it to one side or dropping them down to get under trees and, you know, it was, it was tight. It was, <laughs> there's no relaxing, you know, until you see the beach on the other side and you drive out, that's when you, you, you sort of exhale a little bit. Back on the east coast, man, no wreck. Um, just basically got back on the beach. <laughs> Feels a bit strange now on this big wide open beach after being so tight for the last two days. But the tide's getting pretty marginal now to get around the bottom, so we have a quick dip and then keep heading, heading down there. Uh, we got to fuel up as well, so as per usual, we're running out of time, but I think we'll get there. Well, it's the end of a big day, but um, uh, it was good to show the vans off on the west side of the island, wasn't it? Definitely nice to get them across there, but I think there's two phrases there, right? There's the touristy like creek float down on your pineapple and then there's the, you know, the four wheel driving and getting on those tracks and there's some pretty cool tracks through there. But it's, uh, it's always the usual story. The, um, the nicest places aren't, aren't always easy to get to, so just prove that once again. Yeah, I think what Dave's saying, going to the, uh, going to the best places, it's, um, you know, it's not always uh, easy to get to. And I think that's probably gonna be the next trip or two is uh, some pretty tricky destinations and hopefully the reward of getting uh, you know, views like that that uh, not that many people get to see. It just reminds me of how lucky we are to be so close to Fraser. It's just, yeah, it's definitely God's country. It's a gorgeous place. But yeah, I think highlights of the trips probably the Gala Bypass getting up through there was pretty good. Um, you know, getting a bit of train action, obviously getting to the top. So, became so, so nice up there. And then that track out of the west, that thing is a challenge. And right on cue, we left our run to the very, very slightest of margins to get around Hook Point, you beauty. That's how we always do it, isn't it? As usual, we're racing to the, to the barge. Matthew's car's running out of fuel. I'm renowned for running out of diesel, and I thought I was in good shape, but um, yeah, because the tide had come up and the sand was so soft, it was just drinking the whole way down, and. Just watching the needle go down and down and down. By the time we got to the ferry, it was it was pretty low. We made it. We got on. We got everyone on the same ferry this time. We had a little little ferry trip and they yeah, made it back to Inskip. That's Fraser Island done. Need to go over and have a shower, but it's been a good trip. It's been really good. The gear's a bit messy, but not one casualty on the whole thing. So you know, vans, cars, everything's come through really well. So did a lot of prep with the vehicles, particularly. And, 
uh, the expedition vehicles straight off the uh, production lines. Good result to get them out there and treat them the way we've treated them and just uh, they become away so good, it's been great. So. Definitely a worthwhile one. The smiles on everyone's face is probably what makes it the success. We could have made it whatever we wanted to really. It could have been nice and easy, daisy, driving along the beach and, and you know getting all the glamour shots or we could have actually gone and taken it on. I feel like we've taken it on. We've, we've had excellent partners for this trip again. You know, Nick from ARB, um, Dean from Volkswagen Cricks, you know, and those guys brought along really good gear, matched that up with our really good gear and, and that's sort of what makes these trips possible and what makes them successful and you know for us to get uh, the summit series to the west coast to do those tracks uh, without any damage um, to get the new product pretty much straight out of the factory get them functional and working exactly how they're supposed to straight off the bat is an absolute success we've just had an awesome four days of testing on the island and learned a lot and um, you know really confirmed that fraser island is a great testing ground obviously the two new vans so easy to just pack up you know, get going, pull up at a site, open it all up for lunch, shut it all down, go to a new site, open up again for dinner and have a, have a great sleep with, with two double beds in such a small unit. To using them this weekend, it feels like we've, you know, delivered on what we, we thought we wanted to create. Good, good product. I think that, that proves itself when you do these sort of trips, you know, you, you put uh, a vehicle through its pace on a road and so what, you've got to get off road to really know what they're about. And same thing with the van, you can put it in a showroom, looks great, but until you do what we've done, you really don't get to appreciate just how good they, they do perform. I've got uh, only a couple of modifications on the car and the suspension was a big one. Other than that, yeah, put the tow bar on, grab yourself a van, go and enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. I think it was a, another epic trip. So um, a lot shorter, compacted a lot in there. For us, from, from an ARB perspective, it's really about showing our customers and obviously um, Zone RV's customers what you can actually do if you have a properly set up vehicle. Most of these cars, they don't actually come with rated recovery points, so we tested a few of those out. Uh, the tyres, the suspension. One thing that I did notice between our car and Dean's was was a bull bar, just the added approach angle. The Expedition Series was, yeah, that was, it was a cracker. Loved it. It's, it was perfectly suited to what we did. Yeah, I think it's sort of, uh, it's opened our, our eyes to what's possible for new trips, you know, because uh, now we've got this product that's going to sit behind our cars. So I think it's going to go anywhere, to be honest, and they're going to set the bar high for us, you know. <laughs> We're going to be able to take them to a lot of places that, you know, will put us out of our comfort zone. So I guess that's the exciting thing for the future. And, you know, we, we haven't quite bitted down exactly what the next trip will be yet, but it's, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be bush, that's for sure. Mm -hmm.